today we are going to discuss the muscles of the pharynx. As you have come across the as the pharynx is the it is a wide muscular tube. So you have to know the it is a made up of the muscles. First of all, you have to remember the whatever the muscles of the pharynx, which we call as the constrictor muscles of the pharynx. Anything which is you are going to related to the muscle, which indicates the constrict uh, constrictors or a constriction, that is all constrictors we call. Those are the muscles of the pharynx. In this, you have to remember this is the diagram representation of the muscles of the pharynx. So when you see the muscles of the pharynx, this is a wide muscular tube, and it is a made up of the three constrictor muscles. One we have the superior, middle, and inferior constrictor muscle. So that in this uh, diagram, you can consider that this muscle, which is the area of the superior constrictor and middle constrictor and inferior constrictor. So these all are the constrictors of the pharyngeal muscles. You have to remember. So what are the preliminary uh, remarks? or the preliminary points you have to remember about the muscles of pharynx Pre preliminary remarks of the muscles of the pharynx so you have to first point in the preliminary remarks of the muscles of the pharynx that is you have to deal the that is the muscles of the pharynx we are going to call as a constrictor muscle and they are the three in number we are going to get right side left side in the midline but you are going to have the superior constrictor, middle constrictor and inferior constrictor. So this is the first uh, you have to tell preliminary remarks about the pharynx. Preliminary remarks about the pharynx you have to tell all the muscles which is a wide muscular tube is formed by the we are going to get the three muscles which is named as a superior, middle and inferior constrictor muscle. Then when you see the second point all these muscles which are there, they are originating to the anteriorly and in, the, in relation to the posterior opening of the nose, mouth and larynx. So this is very important to remember. All the muscles of the pharynx, they are originating anteriorly. Anteriorly in relation to the posterior opening of the nose, oral cavity and larynx. So this is very important to understand anteriorly originating points but they are the post in relation to the posterior opening of the nose, oral cavity and we have the larynx. Third one, almost all these fibers of the constrictor muscle, they run behind posteriorly going and in the midline on the posterior wall of the midline of the posterior wall they are taking the making the union or fusion both the side you have the right and left side muscles come and unite on the posterior wall of the pharynx and they are making the median raphe we call as a median raphe which is extending from the pharyngeal tubercle that you have to remember then next point almost all the, these constrictors of the pharynx which are first one this inferior constrictor overlaps the middle and middle constrictor overlaps the superior so you have to mention the all these constrictor not in the same way they are situated they are overlapping muscles whichever the inferior constrictor overlaps the middle middle overlaps the superior that is then last fifth point in the preliminary remarks of the muscle of pharynx is the inferior part or the inferior border or the lower part of the inferior constrictor muscle will continue as a esophagus. So inferior border of the inferior constrictor continues as a esophagus. So these are the five preliminary remarks of the muscles of the pharynx. Very important to remember because these all are muscles we are going to get right and left side and uh, they are uniting at the midline and this midline uniting we are going to call as a median roughing. So this is very important what I have told 
all the muscles of the pharynx is a white muscular tube so that it is a made up of the three pairs of the constrictor muscle superior middle and inferior constrictor muscle second point all these muscles of constrictor originating that is uh, anteriorly in relation to the in relation to the posterior opening of the nose mouth and oral cavity then third point you have to tell all these muscles on the both the side runs backward uniting at the midline forming the median trape the next point the inferior constrictor muscle overlaps the mid mid overlaps the superior then lastly fifth point you have mentioned the uh, that is the lower part of the inferior constrictor muscle will be continuous as a esophagus so that is a very important you have to remember so whatever the i have told superior constrictor inferior middle constrictor inferior constrictor so let us we are going to start uh, with the that is the origin points of these all muscle so when you see the origin of these these uh, labelings you have to remember here we are going to get the styloid process and this is a styloid ligament then which is we are going to get stylopharyngeus this is i have told the median trape that is then here we are going to get the base of the sphenoid bone and this is the pharyngeal tubercle that is then we pharyngo basilar we are going to get the fascia this area pharyngo basilar fascia then muscle which is indicated superior mid and we are going to get inferior constrictor muscle is two types again divides into two types we are going to get the thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus so we are going to have here thyro and cricopharyngeus so let us go into the origin points of the all the constrictor muscle which is you have to remember so superior constrictor uh, originating from the as at the level of the mandible and tongue you have to remember at the level where the mandible and tongue that region we are going to get the superior constrictor so that it is a superior constrictor muscle originates from the pterygoid hemolus pterygo mandibular rumbi medial surface of the mandible at the posterior end of the mylohyoid line then side and posterior part of the tongue tongue and mandible you have to remember where there is an attachment of the superior constrictor muscle so these are the points you have to four origin points of the superior constrictor muscle so medial surface of the mandible and posterior part of the tongue that is very important where the you are going to get the that is the muscles which is originating superior constrictor muscle then second muscle which is you are going to get that is uh, you have the middle constrictor so below this uh, level of the tongue and mandible you are going to get the stylohyoid ligament as you are going to get below the uh, mandible level you are going to get next is a hyoid bone so that region you are going to get the stylohyoid ligament lesser cornea of hyoid bone then greater cornea of the hyoid bone so you have to remember at the level of the middle constrictor at the level of hyoid bone and that is originating from the hyoid whatever the styloid ligament then lesser cornea of hyoid bone then greater cornea of the hyoid bone so this is what you have to remember about the origin point of the middle constrictor <coughs> then we have the uh, inferior constrictor when you go to the inferior constrictor i have told it is divided into a two types of muscles we are going to divide thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus name itself gives you a it is originating from the thyroid cartilage and the cricopharyngeus cricoid cartilage so simple way you have to remember the thyropharyngeus originating from the thyroid cartilage then cricopharyngeus originating from the cricoid cartilage so all these three you are going to get from the thyroid and cricoid cartilage so these are the simple uh, way you have to remember the all the muscles of the pharynx in this you have to mention uh, styloid process and styloid ligament that is very important you have to remember the superior constrictor muscle originating from the tongue and mandible inferior middle constrictor at the region of the hyoid bone we are going to get 
and uh, in period consist time you are going to get the thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus so thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage in generally this way you have to remember the origin <coughs> insertion of the that is a constrictor muscles then going to the insertion point all these constrictor muscles both the side they are going into the posterior so pipes going anterior to the posterior on laterally and posteriorly on the midline so you are going to get the insertion of these all constrictions constrictor muscles they are inserting on the making the median drape on the posterior wall of the pharynx so you are going to get this uh, median drape is formed not anteriorly it is formed whatever anteriorly origin points they go posteriorly lateral passing to the posteriorly and they are <coughs> they are attached to the or making the right and left side both they unite together at the midline and that is the insertion point of the constrictor so what i am talking here insertion of the these all constrictor the uh, they are inserting at the median drape form on the posterior wall of the pharynx that is you have to remember then going to the what is the nerve supply of the pharynx when you go to the nerve supply of this almost all the you are going to get the muscles of the pharynx and pharynx is supplied by the pharyngeal branch branches we are going to get of pharyngeal branches of vagus nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve as nerve uh, name itself gives you the supply to the muscles of the pharynx that is the muscles of this all that is uh, which is you are going to get the constrictor muscle are supplied by the you are to tell pharyngeal branch which is we are going to get the, that is the vagus nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve then going to the inferior constrictor this inferior constrictor which is you are going to get the near to the that is the larynx also at the level so we are also going to get inferior constrictor recurrent laryngeal and laryngeal nerve which is supply in the inferior constrictor then what is the blood supply of pharynx so total this uh, you are going to get the even blood supply by the ascending pharyngeal branch that is we are going to get the ascending pharyngeal branch from the carotid artery external carotid artery then also it is by the palatine artery ascending palatine artery ascending pharyngeal artery you are going to get the blood supply you are going to get as a supplied by the pharyngeal artery branches they are from the arising from the carotid artery okay then venous drainage all the these veins pharyngeal veins drains into the internal jugular vein and lingual vein lingual and internal jugular vein then what is the uh, lymphatic drainage of this we are going to get the pharyngeal group of lymph nodes that is a retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes they are draining to the deep cervical group of lymph nodes deep cervical retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes so this is all about the nerve supply blood supply then venous drainage and lymphatic drainage of the pharynx so after this we are going to deal about the other point which you are going to get that is other diagrammatic the diagrams we are going to see that is a one which is you can remember about the uh, that is a pharynx most important diagrams you are going to get about the pharynx you are to these all muscle which are uh, appears uh, on the side view you can remember the all the parts mid constrictor superior constrictor how the side view of the superior constrictor and we are going to get the mid constrictor and we are going to get the inferior constrictor so inferior constrictor thyropharyngeus arising from the thyroid cartilage then cricopharyngeus cricoid cartilage inferior constrictor you can very well see on the lateral view that is of the diagram which is gives you the idea about the how they are originating this is a superior constrictor mid constrictor inferior constrictor mid uh, inferior overlap so mid mid overlap superior overlapping so this is a two point two muscles which division that is a inferior constrictor muscle you can see this is thyroid cartilage and cricoid and uh, originating from that 
So this is the one diagram you can remember. So these all, which is I have told, external laryngeal, we are going to get recurrent laryngeal now. These are the relating at the level of larynx. So you can uh, this inferior constrictor muscle are supplied by the different nerve. That is a different means larynx nerve. So we are going to get external laryngeal nerve supplying the these, and we are going to get these are the two separate muscle, cricopharyngeus and thyropharyngeus are the part of the inferior constrictor muscle. Then next going to the other point, which all the side view. This is when we take the coronal section. You are going to get the epiglottis palate, how the fibers are uh, coming and attaching to the total and making the uh, musculature of the pharynx and how the muscular tube is formed behind the nose, behind the oral cavity, behind the larynx. So this is the one which is you can remember about the muscle. This is the diagram where I have told the uh, inferior overlaps the mid, mid overlap the superior. See, but there is a the space in between. That is the weakest point where we get the pharyngeal diverticulum. Diverticulum, is, it is a herniation through the weakest part of that. If it is arising from the pharynx, we are going to call pharyngeal diverticulum because all three are separately overlapping. So that you have to remember the here the uh, inferior constrictor overlaps the mid, mid overlaps the superior. So that diagram, uh, this is you can remember, mid, that is the inferior overlaps, mid, mid overlaps superior. This is the cavity of the pharynx. The next which is you have to remember about the, how the I have told the pharynx is the, you are going to get continuation down as a esophagus. So, whatever the air from the nose which is nasal cavity, this tract will be going to the larynx and trachea. So, I am talking about the nasal cavity, oral cavity. How the air passage and how the food is enters. How the mechanism, what is the way or what is the root of the these all air and food. This diagram which represents the you are going to get from the nose, nasopharynx, oropharynx. Then it is coming to the larynx and trachea, that is the air. Food, we are going to get the oral cavity, oropharynx, then we are going to get the we are going to get the laryngopharynx, then esophagus. That is the one three parts which is the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx. So these are the parts you can remember: oropharynx, laryngopharynx, and we are going to get the airway passage above larynx. And larynx below will be the continuation that is the trachea. Inferior constrictor muscle, pharynx, which is continuous as we are going to get as a that is the esophagus. So, this is the one which is a you should remember about the uh, how the air and food tracks are maintained. Then, next you are going to get when you see the on the lateral view, this is the one muscle thyropharyngeus how appears and cricopharyngeus. Those are the inferior constrictor muscles. Then all this is the one which is also representing the total. This is a diagram I have shown you how the division or the parts of the pharynx. So parts of the pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx, like this part is not uh, included in the pharynx. You are going to get there is a nasopharynx. It is nasal cavity. <coughs> So behind the nose means this much area we are going to call this much area is a nasopharynx. Then we are going to get the oropharynx and this is the laryngopharynx. So this diagram will give the idea of the parts of the pharynx. Then next I have told the boundaries and all. When you get the anteriorly, superiorly, posteriorly and inferiorly. So superiorly I have told the base of the skull, boundaries of pharynx I have told. Superiorly it is bounded by the, we have the base of the skull, then we are going to get the spinoid bone, then we have the first vertebrae that is all basic occiput, all will be forming the, that is the boundaries superior. Anterior wall is pharynx is communicates with the nasal cavity, oral cavity and larynx. It is the we can call as an it is a incomplete. 
inferiorly pharynx is continuous as a we are get, get the esophagus posteriorly it is a glide over the prevertebral fascia separating from the vertebrates we are going to get cervical vertebrae then on each side communicating nasopharynx to the mid ear cavity that is a tubal auditory tube we are going to get that is a communication then on each side attachments it is attached to the total you can remember the tongue we have the mandible hyoid bone thyroid and cricoid cartilage attachment related to the on the either side you have the styloid process styloid ligament then common carotid internal carotid external carotid artery on the side so these all you all remember about the boundaries communication attachment relation so that is about the pharynx so next one which is you are going to get when you see the uh coronal section of the face at the region where you can see the all the three parts which is easily you can see that is the nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx on the anterior view how the you are going to see the all the three parts that is the nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngeal one more in the oropharynx we are going to have the palatine tonsil so these are the palatine tonsils which are situated in the tonsillar fossa almond shape small size almond in shape and they are situated in the tonsillar fossa in the oropharynx and that is bounded by the we are going to get the palatoglossal arch palatopharyngeal arch in between this palato uh, glossal and palatopharyngeal arch i have told tonsils uh, palatine tonsil almond shape so that it has a upper pole lower pole medial surface lateral surface it has a anterior border posterior border so tonsil i am discussing about the palatine tonsil palatine tonsil this is a tonsil which is situated near the palate tonsillar fossa in the oropharynx they are in the two number right and left on the palate we are going to get the tonsillar fossa uh, how that is appears like a small almond shape and uh, due to the almond shape because that it has a upper pole lower pole it has a medial surface lateral surface two surface and we have the anterior border posterior border so that is the one which is you all remember about the tonsil then after this we are going to get here we have the structure forming the tonsillar bed we are going to get the which is we are going to get Many structure which are forms the tonsillar bed. They are deeper to the going to the pharynx. So those we are going to get the tonsillar bed. So in this uh, you have to remember the structure which is you can remember this a tonsil, and these all are the structure which are forming the tonsillar bed. We have the beds in our uh, body organ related stomach bed, sciatic bed. Then this is a tonsillar bed. only three beds you are pancreatic bed only four beds you have to remember in the structure i have told first one stomach bed sciatic bed then pancreatic bed and tonsil so this tonsil which is situated in the tonsil uh, that is a palate region below the palate then which is uh, in the tonsillar fossa so whatever you are going to get in between cuttings normal cuttings we are going to get the crypts we call it as a crypts so that you have to uh, remember then uh, this is a folded by the palatoglossal arch palatopharyngeal arch anteriorly we have the palatoglossal posteriorly palatopharyngeal so these are the pharyngobasilar fascia and uh, from deeper to the superficial superior transverse muscle buccopharyngeal fascia then the peritonsillar space these all will be forming the tonsillar bed so most important you have to remember pharyngo basilar fascia superior transverse and buccopharyngeal fascia they will form the including the uh, this will all structure forming the tonsillar bed so specially tonsillitis surgically removal of tonsil we call as a tonsillectomy we are going to get the tonsillectomy so this is all about the palatine tonsil pharynx pharyngeal muscle what are the boundaries and all of the pharynx so this is the one which is you can remember 
how the tonsils are look when we see on the anterior aspect opening the mouth opening the mouth on either side we are going to get this the tongue on the either side we are going to get the this is a palatine tonsil both the side on the tonsillar fossa so that is the one which is you remember one more which is you have to remember that is a valdius lymphatic ring we are going to get valdius lymphatic ring <coughs> So I have told these tonsils, you know, palatine tonsil. These uh, uh, tonsils are the you have to remember that is the these are the aggregation of the lymphoid tissue. Aggregation of the lymphoid tissue that is forms the tonsil. And near and around this, they are making the right side and left side. There is a groups of lymphoid tissues. Groups of the lymphoid tissue near and around the nose, oral cavity, all these, they are present on the right and left side. So that they make the circle. And this is discovered by Waldier and named as a Waldier lymphatic ring. Waldier's lymphatic ring. What is that indicate? We get the pharyngeal tonsil, nasopharynx. Enlargement, pathologically enlarged this pharyngeal tonsil we call adenoids. You have to remember. Second group, tubal tonsil, near the auditory tube opening, we are going to get the tubal tonsil. Then we have the palatine tonsil, just now I have uh, explained the palatine tonsil. Below the tongue, we are going to get the lingual tonsil. <coughs> lingual, palatine, tubal and pharyngeal. This is one side, but it is a midline, you are going to get other side. And this will be making the circle. So it is named as a Waldius lymphatic ring. So what, what is a Waldius lymphatic ring? These are the aggregation of the lymphatic tissue or limp, uh, lymphatic tissue or the tonsils near and around the oral cavity, right side and left side. And they are, we are going to get as a right side and left side combinedly, we are going to get in one circle. That is we call as a Waldius lymphatic ring. And that is consist of the pharyngeal tonsil, Limb, uh, that is a tubal tonsil, palatine tonsil, lingual tonsil. Below the tongue, tonsils, that is a lingual we call. So this is about the, all about the, you have to remember about the uh, pharynx. So clinical anatomy of pharynx, first I have told the inflammation of pharynx, pharyngitis, nasopharynx, laryngopharynx or oropharynx. You are going to get the pharyngitis commonest respiratory or upper respiratory passage or oral cavity we are going to get the infection that is a we call as a pharyngitis then second one you have to remember about the that is a pharyngeal diverticulum i have told inferior overlaps the mid mid overlaps the superior in between there there is a muscular space in between that there is a muscle a overlapping region that is the weakest point Herniation from that appearing, herniation, bulging uh, of uh, structures from these all in between the two muscles we are going to see in the pharynx, we are going to call as a pharyngeal diverticulum. Then third you have to tell pathologically enlarged uh, nasal pharynx, nasal tonsil we call as adenoids, then I have told tonsillitis tonsillectomy, surgical removal and what, what symptoms is given if pharyngitis is there you are going to get difficulty in swallowing dysphagia dysphagia is you are going to get as a one of the symptom uh, sign your symptoms you are going to get like a dysphagia difficulty in swallowing okay so these all are the clinical anatomy of the virus. what you have to tell clinical anatomy first I have told pharyngitis it may be the you are going to get tonsillitis, then you have the pharyngeal diverticulum, then surgical removal of tonsil, palatine tonsil, tonsillectomy, then pathologically enlarged, uh, we are going to get pharyngeal tonsil, that is we call adenoids. So this is all about the, uh, that is the pharynx. It is the second part of the my lecture, which includes the muscles of the pharynx, constrictor muscles of the pharynx, I have covered the one second boundaries, then I have covered the what are the clinical anatomy points you have to remember about the pharynx. So these are the diagrams you have to practice.
So with this, we are completing the packets. Right,